Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Nippon Life India Asset Management Limited Q3 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Motilal Oswal Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Prayesh Chen from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Aman. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Motilal Oswal Financial Services, I welcome you all to Nippon Life India Asset Management Limited 3Q FI23 Earnings Conference Call. We have along with us Mr. Sandeep Sikka, ED and CEO, along with the top management team of Nippon Life India Asset Management. I would like to hand over to Mr. Sikka for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Pray. Good evening and welcome to our Q3 FI23 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us uh, a CFO, Pratik Jain, Chief Business Officer, Sagata Chatterjee and Ashwin Dugal, Chief Digital Officer, uh, Arpan Sa, and Fuji Rakesan, nominee of Nippon Life Japan. Our detailed investor presentation and press release has been uploaded on the exchanges as well, uh, as, well as a website. Before we take your questions, let me share some comments on the recent industry trends and our quarterly performance. In Q3, the Indian equity markets remained, remained rage-bound with a positive bias driven by strong corporate earnings, superior growth, economic growth versus fair, and a peaking of inflation expectations. However, ongoing global uncertainties, FI outflow, and a weak INR USD outlook also impacted the growth momentum and led to some volatility. Despite the mixed overall outlook, a asset management industry maintained its growth momentum driven by higher retail awareness and improved access of mutual fund products across the length and breadth of the country. The industry assets rose by 5%, mainly driven by higher equity and ETF assets. The base of unique investors grew by 20% to 37 million. Monthly SIPs touched an all-time high of Rs 136 billion, an increase of 20%, while SIP folios rose by 25% to 61 million. The consistent expansion of investor base and growth in AEM driven by SIP and ETF flows indicate the investor's diverse needs and the industry's superior capability to fulfill them vis-a-vis -vis other financial products. Growing financial awareness and differentiated and transparent product suite and innovative digital strategies are expected to be the key driver for the growth of the industry in future as well. At Nippon India Mutual Fund, our priority is to be future ready and capture the long-term opportunity. In Q3, Nippon India Mutual Fund maintained its industry ranking of fourth position. In this quarter, AUM increased by 3% to Rs. 2,928 billion. At Nippon India Mutual Fund, our core focus remains invest on investors' interest. We added 2 million folios in the last nine months and continue to have the largest base in the mutual fund industry. Our share of industry unique investors was largely stable at 36% with a base of more than 13 million investors. Uh, systematic flows are a stable and a key driver for industry's long-term equity. So, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that we have lost the line for the management. We would request all participants to please remain connected while we reconnect them. Thank you.
one more. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. We have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, apologies for that. Um, our MLA's systematic transaction book is at Rs. 123 billion. Quarterly flows increased by 45% to Rs. 29 billion. On a gross basis, uh, 561,000 systematic folios were added in Q3. Our systematic AUM rose by 15% to Rs. 583 billion. 56% of our SIP AUM has continued for over five years vis-a-vis 23% for the industry. Also, in volatile markets, folios with lower ticket size have demonstrated longer vintage and better stickiness. 14% of our SIP folios have continued for more than five years against industry, uh, industry is 11%. Today, Nippon India Mutual Fund offers industry-based suite of products in passive category. With strong growth in industry's passive assets, our ETF ecosystem is already in place and far ahead of its peers in terms of investor base and mindshare. In this segment, we manage an AUM of rupees 683 billion and have a market share of 14%. Excluding EPFO allocation, which goes to two specific mutual funds, we would be the largest ETF player in the country. The gold ETF is the biggest fund in this category with uh, AUM of Rs. 67 billion in assets. Our share in industry's ETF folios rose to 61%. In Q3, we added 137,000 investors and accounted to 99% of the total ETF folio addition in the industry. We have 69% share of ETF volumes on BSC and NSE. Our ETF average daily volumes across key funds remain far higher than the rest of the industry. A digital centric strategy is also the key my, uh, keystone for sustainable growth and profitability. Along with several digital initiatives such as cart buying, which we took uh, to enhance our partners and investor experience in Q3, we also rolled out Nippon India Mutual Fund, WhatsApp channel, real-time comprehensive transaction and service suite for our investors. The Business Easy 2.0 app is aimed at driving more meaningful engagement, retention, and growth through advisory, detailed analytics, and smart insights. In Q3, the digital platform contributed to 59% of our total new purchase transactions. Over 900 2,000 purchases were executed through digital assets, an increase of 19%. Nippon India Mutual Fund has a well-diversified and a nimble distribution base with a wide presence through 270 locations across the country. As on December 2022, we had mm, over 89,000 distributors and panel with us. The MFT base rose to over, uh, rose to over 88,800 with an addition of nearly 1900 distributors in this quarter. Now on a financial performance. For the quarter ended December 31st, 2022, profit after tax was at rupees 2.1 billion, an increase of 18%. Operating profit was at uh, 2 billion. Operating profit as a ratio of average assets under management was 28 basis point in Q3 uh, FI23 as compared to 26 basis point in Q2 FI23. In the past, the company has followed a consistent dividend policy. In FI22, NAM India distributed its highest ever dividend with a payout ratio of 96%. Over the last eight financial years, NAM India has distributed a cumulative dividend of rupees 36 billion rupees. As we grow organically through our physical and online channels, we remain open to evaluate investments in, in strategic opportunities that add to the profitability or complement our existing business and ultimately are in the interest of minority shareholders. As signatory to UNPRI, we have already begun to integrate ESG aspects into various areas of planning, operation, fund management, risk, and governance. Our goal is to encourage higher adoption of ESG principles within the asset management industry. As a, as a responsible investment manager, we are building a resilient portfolio that will not only uh, provide sustainable returns to our investors, but will also have a stiff environmental and social impact. 
we will also seek a relevant disclosures in ESG matters from our various investing companies. To sum up, I would like to reiterate, at NAM India, investor centricity remains the key theme. We strive to deliver a superior experience and sustainable returns to our investors and in the process add value to our shareholders. We are confident to continue our trend of profitable growth in coming quarters. With these comments, we are happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wish to ask a question may please press star and 1 at this time. First question is from the line of Kunal Tanvi from Banyan Tree Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So I had three questions. Uh, what, for the first one was on the yields. Uh, we saw, you know, improvement in the yields both on a QOQ basis and like a kind of flattish on a YOI basis. Uh, can you help us understand uh, uh, the the key reasons for the same and how sustainable, uh, you know, uh, the improvement would be? given the, you know, uh, natural decline in the yield because of the increase in size. That is number one. Second is on the debt side of the business. Again, the industry continued to see, you know, outflows uh, during the quarter and our outflows were even higher than that. And we saw dip in the market share. Can you run us through, you know, what's happening in the industry and uh, how we as a company are kind of, you know, uh, uh, dealing with this because what we remember in last quarter we have said that we have taken some uh, increase in sizing we like kind of increase the TER so where we are there in, in that journey and finally third on you know uh, there was this article uh, regarding uh, news article regarding uh, SEBI's you know study on the TER for mutual fund industry uh, so the, wherein you know uh, the the regulator is thinking of moving from a scheme based TER to a uh, AMC based you know overall uh, AUM based TER. Any thoughts on same would be helpful. Thanks. Thanks, Kunal. Uh, I think I'll start with the third question and then give it to my colleagues Pratik and Ashwin for the income of yields and uh, uh, debt outflow. I think with the regard to the recent news article regarding regulation or TER, I think discussion is still underway. We await the final draft uh, of the regulation and in this regard, I think we'll avoid making any comment or speculation at this stage. You know, I think uh, with respect to the yields, I think uh, Pratik, if you could please take that. Yeah, yeah thanks Kunal. So Kunal, we've been maintaining about the yield that look, uh, if the asset mix remains the same uh, and also in terms of the debt returns, you know, as and when it increases, you know, we'll be having the probability to increase the TR as well. And, uh, you know, also on the ETF side, you know, we'll keep looking at opportunities if we can further improvise on yield. So all the three things, you know, the composition has remained more or less the same, uh, or rather it has improved on the equity side. Uh, we have been able to marginally increase our yields on the debt and the ETF side, which has helped us to uh, maintain the run rate vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the last quarter or the, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the corresponding quarter. Uh, Thanks, Sandeep. And uh, yeah, Kunal, uh, regarding the outflows, uh, first I take what's happening in the industry. So, owing to the changing, uh, you know, macroeconomic scenario across the world and central banks tightening yields, uh, we have seen, uh, you know, yields move up quite substantially, okay, all over the world, including India. Hence, we have seen outflows from uh, debt funds across the industry. One, to avoid any MTM losses that may arise out of returns. Second, uh, you know, there is some competition also from bank deposits because bank deposit rates have moved up since. Uh, so there is some, especially short-term money, which is one year, you know, six months, 12 months, 18 months, money has moved there. And uh, thirdly, uh, you know, so because of the rising interest rates, a lot of corporate treasuries have preferred to prepay their, uh, you know, loan uh, 
you know their, their credits to the banks etc so a, a combination of these three factors has led to industry outflows however we have seen a slightly higher outflow for nippon because over the last two years we also had a fairly uh, a robust build up in fixed income assets and some of that money has now moved out uh, and uh, we are fairly confident as uh, you know things settle down yield stabilize over the next uh, you know one or two quarters we should see some of those flows come back into the system sure sure thanks if i can ask two follow ups one was on on the you know on the increase in the yield for say debt and the etfs how does you know one think about the market share impact of the same uh, like over a you know medium to long term like uh, when uh, when we interact with other players we haven't seen any other player you know taking price t- uh, increasing the tr and we we have done that how does that reflect into market share and how we think about it over a you know longer term uh, and the second is uh, for the equity side for the new uh, a, a money that we receive from the distributors have we seen any improvement in the you know uh, net realization which was you know very bad say in 2021 uh, how has that has have we seen any improvement there Uh, so uh, kural that uh, in terms of uh, the yields you know since there were no nfos uh, you know uh, that way you know which can have uh, you know a significant impact on the overall equity yields the money has come in the existing schemes and there you know we have been maintaining that you know we'll continue to make uh, profitable growth so you know we d- we have uh, maintained uh, you know our payout ratios there as regards the uh, debt yields are concerned uh see what we uh, continuously monitor is what is the return generated from our scheme vis-a-vis the competition and what is the net yields in the hands of the investors and appropriately we take uh, decision and uh, the uh, the recent redemption if you are talking about this has got nothing to do with our increase in the tr and also you know wherever we have increased the tr it is barely one or two basis point so i don't see that can be attributed to any kind of change in market share got it thank you so much all the very best thank you thank you before we take the next question I'd like to remind the participants to limit the question to two per participant if time permits you may join the queue for any follow up thank you the next question is in the line of sahesh mittal from hdfc securities please go ahead hi uh, good evening uh, so uh, Sahaj, you are not clearly audible. May I request you to bring the hand? Is it up? is it better? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, so two questions from my side. So firstly on yield, right? Uh, so if I calculate definitely the uh, if I look at the segment wise yield. So for equity, even if you have taken a if even if you have increased your TR for maybe uh, ETFs or debt. even then for uh, the equity segment has seen some improvement and material improvement this is not a small improvement so it's about 1 and a half uh, 1.5 basis point improvement on a sequential basis so what is driving that is this an abrasion or some lower commission payout some adjustment to commission payouts done in this quarter what what is actually driving this and is it, is this kind of are these kind of yields sustainable uh, that is one uh, second is on so you uh, draw so you you talked about using business 2.0 for data analytics so i mean how are you using this and if you can give us some insights how is this helping us in better customer retention or improving uh, customer journey uh, yeah and the third is around our operating expenses so the expenses have shot up uh, quite materially in this quarter so what has uh, what is driving that yeah yeah so uh, see in terms of the yields uh, you know again the you know we have been maintaining that look uh, one is the composition of our aem uh, secondly the size of the scheme uh, third how, you know the competitive environment and fourth how do you receive your new flows so if you receive your new flows from uh, you know partners ifas and you know from b30 cities those are more profitable and more sticky and those are more granular aems where we make uh, you know slightly more margin and uh, you know it is the combination of these effect predominantly that most of our money has come from b30 cities from uh, you know our partners 
and that's where our realization is up uh, on the equity side with regards to the expenses uh, you know there has been uh, some one off expense on the it spend what we have done uh, you know so that's not a regular feature uh, almost uh, you know the increment what we are seeing 30 to 40% of that is related to that uh, uh, you know the one off spend what we have done further what we have also done is uh, consolidated our uh, you know office in the last quarter so we have shifted uh, you know and uh, have closed down one of our office on the narimen point and we have consolidated our uh, even the sales office which used to be narimen point in the same place where our corporate office is so uh, that also has led to some increase expenditure but these are non recurring so predominantly those are the expenses but besides that uh, you know now that we are completely opened and we are seeing good traction in terms of our uh, you know equity performance there has been increased travel and uh, you know activities in terms of our distribution meets etc so this is all uh, about the uh, you know says about the difference in the expenses yeah. yes uh, hi uh, uh, this is arpan and uh, so quickly giving you one insight on the business easy uh, as we know you know data is the new fuel for the uh, for, for doing any kind of uh, work or operations a uh, business easy by itself is a very smart and intelligent asset that we have developed in house which allows our partners to give the best of choices uh, to their consumers uh, and which also revolves around real time uh, market movements uh, so those uh, particular aspects when they come in and the ease of doing business completely paperless allows them to connect to a larger denominator of uh, of of consumers uh, who would uh, you know want to do things at the click of a button so it's a completely app to web interface or a web to web or an app to app interface which works together at the same point of time ensuring uh, that uh, the best of uh, advisory best of insights analytics are passed on to the consumer through basic execution delivery thank you right and so one follow up maybe so x of the mix change which has happened right uh, towards equity so even x of those changes uh, yield seem to have improved in equity so i couldn't quite get uh, that uh, if you can no so as i mentioned the contribution from the uh, and even the share of bank has increased right if you are saying that the uh, that ifas are more profitable than so so uh, I think we have not changed. Yeah, Chatty. Yeah. So, uh, so what the Chatty decides? See, the flows which are coming to us the inequity, like Pratik mentioned, it's uh, uh, cutting across. Uh, you know, the B30 market, like you mentioned, the banking share is also increasing for us. Uh, we are ha seeing an increase in flows across uh, the distribution uh, category, uh, either MFD or banks or the national distributors. the good part is most of these banks also have very deep penetration in b2b market we are strong there and we are getting lot of retail flows coming in from those uh, branches which are uh, you know spread across the b2b market of india uh, hence uh, you know the distribution of equity flows is quite uh, fragmented uh, historically it has been fragmented uh, along with that uh, we also have this uh, big uh, you know sort of delta which has come in through sip as you know sip is a very strong uh, category which uh, we have built up uh, uh, you know uh, we have also shared in our initial talk that how the sip book has grown from uh, roughly around 650 crores to more than 1000 crores per month uh, so those all those things aggregate into uh, equity sales and of course the uh, you know margin expansion is happening because of uh, that got it uh, i'll join back in the queue thanks thank you the next question is on the line of lalit dev from equitas securities please go ahead yeah uh, hello sir good evening uh, thank you the opportunity so i just wanted to understand on this sip flow movement so sir if i look at for this quarter so like we have received garnered uh, about like 29 billion of uh, rupees and our funds in this quarter <clears throat> now if we uh, see the movement of aum so the if we exclude if we include the fund flow then the aum uh, seems to be on a flat flatish now so just wanted to understand is, have we seen enough uh, redemptions in the sip flows or there are like a mark to market losses which we have seen in this sip aum 
I'll take this. Uh, uh, so, Saugata is said again. Uh, see, you are right. Uh, the uh, uh, market share, the equity market share now has flattened for us. Uh, rather, it has in, uh, started inching up. Uh, if you take the March, uh, uh, April market share, the March market share and current market share, it has moved from 6.12 to 6.18. Uh, it is uh, it is a small jump which has happened, uh, but uh, the uh, resultant is because of the uh, SIPs, uh, you know, increasing every month. Uh, net sales, like uh, we have been mentioning in previous quarterly uh, calls also, till the time the net sales for us does not cross the six six quarter uh, percentage, our market share jump uh, will be uh, uh, on uh, will be limited. Uh, happy to share the net sales uh, growth every month has started uh, moving up uh, and uh, uh, currently as we speak uh, last quarter month on month the net sales has now started moving towards the 6% mark. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a combination of both SIP inflows plus lump sum inflows coming in which is contributing to net sales. Uh, we still have uh, some margin of uh, growth to uh, you know take place which would help us to uh, grow the market share. Uh, yeah, that's that's the point from our side. Sure, sir. And sir, like on the ETF side, can you tell us about like what is the uh, what what kind of yields do we make currently on the ETF side? And like uh, sir mentioned that we have some uh, we are looking to increase the TERs in that segment. So how do we see that yield spanning over the next two three years? Like how much can we increase over in that segment? So, so see, we've been maintaining that uh, you know uh, we may we make about nine to ten basis point on the net on the ETF side, and we'll continue to explore the uh, the products where you know we can uh, uh, or whether we have a unique proposition available, and where our uh, you know market acceptability is better than the uh, competition, we'll keep you know increasing uh, you know our margins. Because as you know, our overall ethos remains that you know we need to do a profitable growth. However, ETF is a vanilla product, and there is not much you know we can do beyond a point. And therefore, it will be broadly in line with the uh, the industry. Uh, but wherever we have opportunity, we'll uh, you know we'll try to improve the uh, net realization. And just to add to it, I think taking into account the liquidity we have on the stock exchanges, I think we're in a far better position to increase the yield wherever it is required compared to the competition. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So just as a clarification, you know, this when we talk, when I spoke about the ETF, uh, you know, this was including our CPSC uh, as well as, uh, and but this excludes the gold. Uh, you know, just in case if you are putting into the model, uh, comparing to, because at the gold we charge, uh, you know, much higher as well as, uh, you know, and uh, CPSC again, because it's a government mandate, they are governed by uh, what is allowed by the, uh, you know, by the ministry. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to our participants, please press star and one to ask a question. The next question is on the line of Mohit from BOB Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. My first question is, uh, basically the unique customers declined, you know, during the quarter from 13.4 to 13.2. Uh, just wanted to know what has happened over there. So, uh, see, those can be, you know, uh, because obviously, uh, as we see some uh, outflows which has happened on the uh, fixed income side as what uh, Ashwin was mentioning and also on the equity side, some redemption would have happened on the lump sum, but I'll give you some data point which would be interesting because if you see on this SIP uh, gross folio share, what we used to be at 5.4% industry, we are now 8.5%. If you look at year on year growth, so from 5.4 to 8.5. Uh, similarly, on the net basis also, uh, you know where you know if you remember that because of performance issue, we were seeing higher redemption. Now on the net basis, we are almost 12% uh, incremental folio share. So this uh, the decline could be marginal. Uh, also, SIPs which were discontinued across the industry, but overall, yeah, the, the I think, and the overall, also the good thing is the overall folios continue yeah, to grow. Yeah. Continues to grow. 
all right understood uh, my second question is is towards the equity market share so i mean while we understand that we have maintained 7.3% market share overall but if i look at equity you know uh, i mean overall if i look at like 10 to 12 quarters we have you know uh, uh, lost market share so any any clarity on that you know in terms of the equity i mean industry is growing faster than us so uh, any any clarity on that so i think uh, you're right i think uh, it's um, earlier they, we were seeing some redemptions coming in i think but last 12 months i think with the performance coming back i think we have seen the redemption has uh, almost uh, slowed down and the new incremental flow uh, is increasing and as we mentioned earlier uh, we started this financial year uh, sorry this calendar year jan with the sit book of 6 650 crores uh, which made it annualized at about 8000 crores and now on a monthly basis this uh, this month we closed at uh, 1020 which is nearly going to be about 13000 crores so i think equity will go up with the lag effect but i think we uh, we are far we feel more far more comfortable and confident as we talk now all right perfect uh, wish you all the best thank you a reminder to participants please press star and one to ask a question the next question is on the line of akshat hari from multi act pms please go ahead um yeah hi sir thank you for the opportunity so my question again is on yields so basically if we see our yield sequentially also have improved by about 3 to 4 basis points and uh, while you've already explained us the increase that we've seen on the debt and etf side uh what i really wanted to confirm is whether there is any one off uh, you know revenue from specially managed accounts or advisory accounts uh, which we booked uh, in this quarter and uh, you know if you could get that number and also what would be the you know comparable number for uh, the previous quarter and the same quarter last year no no i think uh, somewhere you picked it wrong you know we are uh, you know gross realization has been uh, 43 basis point in the q3 23 uh blended and it was 43 uh, uh, 43 42 basis point last quarter so i think uh, it has more or less remained the same while on a 9 month basis we are currently trending at 42 basis point versus 44 basis point so there has been marginally decline of 2 basis point uh, you know on a 9 month basis and it is uh, you know uh, one basis point higher than the uh, sequential quarter so uh, any uh, one of revenue which we booked uh, for the specially managed accounts no no there is nothing there is no one off manage as i uh, mentioned in the last call also that as in when uh, you know uh, the opportunity arises we will be improving our expense ratios on the fixed income as well as the etf and that is what uh, you know this quarter uh, there has been uh, you know the increased realization on fixed income and etf has helped us to improve our realization overall realization and uh, sir my second question was you know on the yield differential on the stock versus flow uh, earlier you know when we started uh, this discussion it used to be around 20 basis points and in uh, uh, one of the previous calls we also mentioned that almost two third of our aums has now shifted to the uh, new uh, newer yield the lower yield so you know uh, what would be this differential now and what percentage of our aum uh, you know which used to be 2/3 is now on newer yields uh, you know if you could give some uh, color on that side no so if you see uh, you know this year the uh, gross flows has not been you know uh, as significant but uh, you know whatever you know the newer gross flows which have come in you know those are all uh, you know those uh, basically car those who have come at the higher rate uh, in the equity side so uh, i think uh, marginally if you say that earlier uh, it was two third it will be like uh, you know almost 70% would have been on the uh, 70% of those assets now would be on the newer rates uh, okay okay thank you sir thank you The next question is on the line of Prayesh Jain. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi sir. Uh, so firstly, you know, just a, a broader question for the industry. Uh, you know, the profit growth for most of the players has been kind of you know flattish or declining, say in the last one or two years, and that obviously has been because of the pressure on yields. Um, how do you see the profitability for the industry? 
say in the next two to three years, do we ever see the profit growth coming in uh, for the industry or for players like us? Uh, how do we see this really panning out? So I'll take this from. I think again from our perspective, the way we see asset management industry is ultimately a volume game. Uh, definitely, I think uh, uh, it's not just about only the basis point what is going to be the yield. Uh, it's going to be how well you execute and how well you can scale it up. So I think from our perspective, I think they will be definitely, as there was in the opening question, regulatory uh, changes, rare, I think will keep coming up. But we believe that I think the key uh, to long-term profitability is going to be execution and building scale. And I think our focus will be on that. Uh, but you know, if you look at the last couple of years as well, there has been a very strong volume growth wherein, you know, uh, the SIP counts have reached new highs, uh, while debt has been kind of uh, on, on the negative side for the last, say, six months to a year. Uh, but uh, you know, the volume growth still has been healthy on the equity side, but still we haven't seen any profit growth coming in for the industry. So, you know, even going ahead with, you know, with volumes kind of, you know, being strong, do we see the profitability really so that in, in a way I'm saying that the other matrices which contribute to profitability, which is basically the yields and the cost can kind of, you know, be at levels which can offset the, which can still benefit, uh, uh, you know, support the profit growth. I think it's going to be, I think before I'll give it to Pratik to make a part of this question. I think when I talk of volume, it's not going to be the, only the volume, also the quality of business that you built up. I think in the earlier question when uh, Sugata talked about the granular business, the small ticket size, all these things, you know, the stickiness is going to be very, very critical. And we strongly believe, I think the long-term business models cannot be built only on uh, higher fees, higher brokerages. I think ultimately we have to keep adding value to the investor and uh, we continue maintaining, yes, they can, even if there may be a little pressure on the yields uh, in short term, which will come because of disruption, because of uh, some competition or somebody new players becoming very, very aggressive. But th this is always short lived. I think from a long term point of view, execution and I think the quality of business remains important. Yeah. Uh and secondly, if we look at the debt business, you know, there has been increased flows towards uh, the index funds and the ETF, the passive side. Uh, so how do you see this panning out say, over the next three years when we are expecting actually the, the long duration or the medium duration assets to gain traction? So in a way, I'm asking is whether, you know, uh, the active will grow faster or you know, do you see the passives on the debt side kind of picking, maintaining the moment of what they've seen? And we see the yields on the debt also kind of staying weak. I think uh, it's very difficult to make, you know, a prediction which what in and debt, whether it's going to be active or passive. But we believe the kind of impact that uh, the volume growth that we have seen in the passive in equity, I think the same kind of trend will not be seen in fixed income. I think in fixed income, active will continue to play a bigger role because uh, and um, I think from our perspective, while we are ready on both the sides, I think we have built, we have a strong portfolio on the fair, passive side and on the debt side. But uh, we believe, and I think again, time will tell, that uh, yeah, active will play a far bigger role than passive in fixed income. Uh, thank you, that's all for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sahaj Mittal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. <clears throat> Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so just one clarification. So if our uh, MF uh, AUM mix remains the uh, same on a QOQ basis for the next quarter, maybe in 4Q, say for hypothetically, if this mix stays the same, then uh, should we expect uh, similar yields? I mean, same yields uh, even in the next quarter? Yeah, yeah of course. See, there is no one-off. See, you have to understand, uh, you know, in terms of, see, broadly, I'll tell you so, what's so happening. I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, clarify, because the kind of jump which we have seen in yields in this quarter, uh, it seems like there is some maybe one of this, or maybe there is some improvement uh, in terms of what we negotiate with our distributors, something of that sort, uh, yeah. No, no, so I'll tell you that, look, uh, there is only one basis point increase in the uh, yield uh, compared to the last quarter. Uh, also, one has to understand that, you know, when you are saying that AUM remains the same, but uh, let me share with you 
that you know certain certain of our schemes where our aims have grown and this also uh, goes to answer what prayesh was asking that what is happening when the uh, size of the scheme goes up you know we uh, as a larger amcs we tend to lose a significant amount of our earning because you know the on the on, entire stock our tr or our chargeability goes down but you know we cannot go and renegotiate the total distribution cost on the uh, thing and therefore uh, like for example if you look at you know our small cap fund which has doubled in the last 2 to 3 years you know the total tr drop because of this uh, telescope uh, reverse telescopic rates you know the uh, you know our uh, tr chargeability has gone down by 15 basis point so so the one is the size of the scheme the asset mix uh, you know uh, and the uh, you know also the mix where it is coming from because obviously you share larger proportion compared to ifas with uh, the nds and bnds so that composition also matters and uh, uh, you know also that uh, nfos if you know earlier nfos were the one who were bringing it down now uh, if it is if this am comes more granularly into our existing schemes I think broadly this uh, realization uh, should continue in the next quarter as well. All uh, right. Uh, right. Of course, one has to keep in mind the regulatory intervention as well. Right. Uh, so, uh, right. So, in 4Q, given that we are seeing drop in AUM, right, because of the mark to market, uh, then ideally uh, we should see because. Uh, the TRs should increase from here on in the next quarter and hence our yield should improve even further uh, in the next quarter, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, I'd rather not comment on that. Uh, mathematically, I'm yeah, just trying mathematically, to understand. Yes. Yeah. Got it, uh, got it. And uh, just to uh, get a sense on a SIP flow, so what percentage of our SIP flows have a vintage of less than two years. Uh, less than two years. Yeah. We don't have that data uh, readily available with us. We can uh, discuss. Uh, Abhishek will talk to you separately on that. Sure. Uh, and on our OPEX, so could you quantify the one-off uh, for this quarter? And on a sustainable basis, what kind of OPEX can we expect? No, so see, uh, you know, uh, the total difference uh, is not that significant, and almost 60% uh, of that is, uh, you know, uh, is one of 40% uh, of that is one of an IT, and uh, the remaining is on the office shift. What we shifted from Nariman point to lower pare. Uh, so broadly, the difference which is there of that 60% amounts is one off, uh, which has happened due to. Uh, IT and uh, IT spend and on uh, office movement. G got it, got it. Uh, thanks. This was all from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. On behalf of Motila Losal Financial Services, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.